Hello and very warm welcome to uh, English lecture preparation. This is Hazrat Jamil, and we will uh, we will we have started a series of lectures on history of English language and literature. Today uh, is our first lecture on this series, and that is old English literature. Uh, how old English literature started? We will discuss in this video. Before discussing that video, uh, students subscribe this channel and uh, press the bell icons so that uh, you have. Um, so that you can watch our new sessions or new video as uh, as long as, as soon as we upload it we will start from uh, the old english literature and the beginnings uh, how old english literature begins uh, uh, english how old english literature begins we will begin from the celts the celtics celtics that include bretons and gaels and up to five uh, up to 54 uh, 55 sorry 55 bc they lived in, in the island of england and then the romans comes romans conquer that island and uh, up to 55 fi from 55 to 4 uh, 407 407 bc they lived uh, um, uh, england was in their rules um, the island of england was uh, conquered by romans and then uh, the anglo saxons invasion uh, take place in 4792 uh, for uh, 787 80 and then the viking invasions uh, from 787 80 to uh, 1066 80 uh, and then uh, the last which is uh, the norman conquest begins in uh, the uh, 1066 AD that is the starting point of Anglo-Norman period and the end of Anglo-Saxon period. So we will uh, explain all these uh, points uh, in a very elaborate form. So uh, look at the first uh, first uh, uh, point: Celts, Bretons, uh, um, and uh, Celts, uh, Celtics that were include Bretons and Gaels up to 55 BC. Before uh, yeah, before that uh, we have. Uh, uh, we have prepared a, a sort of uh, acronyms for uh, for your memorization that is Craven Craven that is C Craven C R A V N. Uh, if you look at the, uh, for the 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 heading of the first five um, first five words that is Celts Romans uh, Anglo uh, and Viking and Normans. It is uh, for your um, for uh, it is. Um, uh, for for your memorization that you can memorize uh, easily um, and the 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 history of old uh, english and <coughs> the history of old english literature so uh, we uh, begins uh, our lectures from um, the celtics uh, the celts were actually uh, that include bretons and gaels uh, celts and romans we will start from that england before the Eng uh, english people England before English England uh, England before the English people from the fifth century onward we find massive migration of Celts uh, and Gales up uh, to this particular island mean England uh, and of Celts and Gales to this particular island we also note that this island was repeatedly invaded by Romans uh, because Rome was the most dominant empire and most dominant military force of their times. One thing, uh, uh, students, uh, is important to note. Uh, uh, to note, there is that in an ancient time before uh, the death of Christ, uh, in those uh, centuries, there was no national boundaries. Uh, they, there were just group or uh, tribes of people, all warriors fighting among each other and whosoever wins will occupy their territory uh, so no national boundary mm, boundaries mostly the stay of these tribes will not be permanent because the fresh tribes will come they will attack again uh, they will uh, again uh, war will, wars will take place and whosoever win will rules uh, that territory so uh, the romans uh, when the romans came here they uh, invaded uh, the island and um, and conquer that island of uh, uh, island of england but uh, this was not a very uh, uh, aggressive kind of invasion because we find that by 55 bc and later by the first century ad romans are quite successful in establishing a system of governance in this celtic england this was not through any violent or aggressive means because there is a lot of evidence to show that 
There is a lot of evidence to show that there was a kind of peaceful coexistence between the Celts and the Romans during their times. The military present helped a lot uh, in maintaining peace in Ireland of England during the Celt Celtic uh, times. Uh, the original inhabitant of this island that we now know as England were the Celts. So in this sense, the story of English begins even before the arrival of English people. Story of English begins even after the arrival of English people, that is the Anglo-Saxons, Anglo-Saxon and Jews, the Anglo-Saxon uh, um, period, uh, which is also known as uh, Old English peri uh, period, this begins after the withdrawal of Romans. So this is the first, this is the first point that uh, uh, how uh, in, uh, Celts came here and how Roman conquered that island and there is a peaceful coexistence between the Celts and the Romans uh, is Celtic uh, Celts people uh, do not have any did not have any army to defend themselves and during their times wars taking place among the tribe and whosoever uh, uh, win the war control their territory and when the Romans uh, as we know that Romans uh, Rome's uh, Roman Empire Rome have a very uh, influential very powerful army and when they conquer in, uh, in the 55th century and the one um, by the first century AD and but they, they, this this uh, war this, this this is not aggressive uh, type of violence this is not um, uh, aggressive um, and uh, the war is not aggressive because there was there, there there was a peaceful coexistence between the Celts and uh, the Romans during their time. If the Celts need army to defend um, their territory, and Roman do uh, Roman do do that function to support uh, to support uh, to defend uh, and, uh, the Celtic people. So that's how uh, the Celts and um, the Romans. Uh, uh, came here and that island of England. Now the third uh, point is beginning of the Anglo-Saxon period after the Romans. How uh, the Anglo-Saxon came in, into this island and uh, established their own empire in uh, in, uh, in England. Visigoths. Uh, the Anglo-Saxon Anglo period begins after the withdrawal of the Roman legions. Uh, from the island of uh, from the land of England from the island of England why now the question is why were the Romans forced to leave England is uh, Rome was a very influential and most powerful empire during their times it, it is the fact that Roman uh, Romes were a very powerful empire during their time but they had a very practical reason to withdraw their legions from the island of England because they have to defend their own land and the Visigoth, uh, Visigoth uh, was a, a, a very violent Germanic invader, uh, invaders uh, taking tribes, mm, a very violent uh, in, in Germanic invading tribe. They were uh, attacking Rome and uh, Rome had to <coughs> withdraw its legions from England in order to defend its own land. By the 4, uh, not 7, 407 AD, Rome uh, leave Romanized Britain and left Britons and uh, left Britain defenseless. And at this point, it was uh, at this point of time that Engl England is in a very vulnerable stage. They are open to attack. They are defenseless, and the and because they did not have any kind of army to defend themselves. Uh, is uh, uh, an earlier we, uh, I have mentioned that um, uh, the Rome when the Roman came here they, uh, um, they there was a peaceful coexistence between the Celts and the Rome and the Ro Roman army had to defend um, uh, the Celtic people and their territory um, now after uh, the withdrawal of after the withdrawal of Romans uh, uh, Romans they were uh, the Celts had, did not have any army to support uh, to defend to defend defend themselves against the invading tribe so England in this in, in during their time uh, was in a very vulnerable state they are open to attacks
Celt received a lot of protections from all of these attacks due to the presence of Rome, a Roman army. Uh, so once they knew they are under attack, and we find that uh, these sets of tribes from different areas uh, invading them. These two important uh, tribes, uh, these two important, uh, the two important of these tribes were Pacts uh, and Scots. Pacts uh, and Scots uh, who were, who arrives in the in the land from the north uh, and also from Ireland. So the Pacts uh, and the Scots uh, attack England and uh, uh, many historians feel that Angles, Saxon and Jews uh, <coughs> which are Germanic, these are Germanic tribes also Germanic tribes that uh, the Angles, Saxon and Jews together arrived in England initially as mercenaries from eastern coast of Europe and they are quite welcomed in the beginning by the Celts and th that was a strategic a very um, and, uh, and so in that sense Celts in fact made a very strategic strategic political mistake they were using the, the help of one set of invading tribes to defend themselves de defend themselves against the another set, set of invading tribes they do a very strategic political mistake because they uh, sought help from one set of invading tribes against the uh, um, uh, another set of uh, invading tribes. So they sought help from Angle, Saxon and Jude that, that are Germanic tribes uh, and they arrived uh, from the eastern coast of Europe as mercenary. But uh, over a period of time the Angle, Saxon and Jude who arrived from the eastern coast as a mercenary uh, from um, uh, eastern coast of as mercenary from eastern coast of Europe, they came, they come and began to settle in this island and spread across the land of England, Northumbria, Mercia, East Anglia, and Wessex. The original inhabitants, the Celts, who were living with the support of the Romanized army, they are now being driven to the mountain areas and Wales. They are now driven to the, the uh, uh, mountain areas and well when the angles saxons and jews defend the celt against the uh, attack of uh, pacts and scots which attack earlier the england they also end up driving out the original inhabitant of the island they um, they also um, uh, drive out the own original inhabitant that is the celt into the mountain areas now this was in fact to know after that what follows is a national migration of the Anglo-Saxon and to the uh, island of Britons. At this point Celts were no longer seen in the areas of the Britons uh, but they have been completely displaced and they have been completely maneuvered by the Anglo-Saxon. Uh, now the question arises, students. The question arises that why why are the why were the Angle Saxon and Jews coming over to England and uh, overthrowing the native population and also establishing their uh, settlements over there? Now there are many historians. Uh, um, there are many reasons uh, and given by the many historians. And one of these uh, reasons is the fertile soil of England at that point of time. And the, uh, the, the, the soil of England is very fertile and this is, that is the one reason uh, to, uh, that is one the reason to settle Anglo-Saxon and Jews uh, and uh, over there and overthrowing the native population uh, that is the Celtic. And the second is it was also considered quite safe for uh, safe for the rest of the uh, from the rest of it was also considered quite safe for then the rest of Europe. Uh, do, uh, as I have earlier mentioned that uh, it was uh, our era of war and most uh, most of the tribes fought among uh, themselves and whosoever when con and con whosoever when will control uh, the territory um, uh, whosoever when will control the territory and uh, and England is considered as a safe zone far um, from war and it, so that's why it uh, they they settled over there and overthrow the native population that is the um, and that is the Celt. Uh, at the later point of time we know that now at the later point of time uh, we uh, hear about uh, we found uh, Anglo-Saxon but the Jews were no longer found 
uh, but the Jews were no longer found. Now the question arises again. The question arises whether there was any kind of uh, resistance offered when the Anglo-Saxon Angle, Anglo began their attack. Uh, Anglo-Saxon actually came as a mercenary from eastern coast of Europe, and now they take uh, over take over the island. And uh, the question uh, the question arises that whether there was any kind of resistance offered to. Um, uh, 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 Anglo-Saxon, yes, of course, King Arthur uh, was the, the figure who showed the resistance against the uh, Anglo-Saxon. King, uh, Anglo uh, King Arthur. King Arthur, now this is the time to look into the one of the famous figures of the old English literature, that is uh, King Arthur. The historicity of King Arthur is much debated. He is said to have lived during the 5th and the early 6th century BC. Uh, he, uh, King Arthur united the Anglians, the uh, King Arthur united the Celtic inhabitants of that time. He had lead the defense of Britain against the Anglo-Saxon invaders and obviously he ends up losing it as well. Um, King, uh, King Arthur actually opposed the um, Anglo-Saxon but he lose it, uh, he ends up losing it as well. In 1130s, 1130s, uh, uh, lead the defense of Britain, Britain against the Anglo-Saxon invader. We find a lot of legends and folklore about the Arthur, mostly uh, in medieval histories. Now, Geoffrey of Monmouth was a, a writer who actually created uh, the literary persona of the King Arthur. In 1130s, we find the Geoffrey of Monmouth uh, creating a literary persona of King Arthur. Now, now again, the question arises that what did they do? Mean they means uh, the Anglo-Saxon do when they arrived in this island, uh, that is England. They had in mind a proper kind of settlement, so. So they uh, went on to establish five kingdoms, which is also known as Heptarchy. Uh, the Anglo-Saxons uh, have in mind the proper kind, uh, have uh, in, uh, in mind a proper kind of settlement. So they um, so they establish uh, their kingdom um, in in five ways: North, that is Northumbria, Mercia, East Anglia, Wessex, and Kent. Uh, in terms of literature, poetry flourish in North, while prose mostly flourish in south uh, poetry mostly flourish in south a fictional hero half forgotten celtic deity whether king arthur uh, actually lived or whether this is just a fictional creation is a much debated and a much contested issue of literary history uh, it is actually a um, uh, much contested issue in the history of english literature that whether he is actually lived or um, uh, it is just a fictional creation uh, and it is a much contested issue uh, so because uh, uh, it uh, because of the many reasons uh, uh, he is called a fictional hero a half forgotten celtic deity and these reasons are uh, he is not mentioned uh, in the anglo-saxon chronicle anglo-saxon chronicle which is the most important document uh, anglo-saxon chronicle is the most important document in the in, of anglo-saxon and he is not mentioned in that chronicles uh, he is not. Uh, he is also not mentioned in the Bede's ecclesiastical history of English people, which is the account of Christians' life, Christians' religions, and all of their life of, during that era, during of their time. And he is also not mentioned in Bede's ecclesiastical history of uh, English people. So that's why uh, he is called a, a, a fictional hero, half forgotten Celtic deity because he is not mentioned in Anglo-Saxon uh, Chronicle and he is not also uh, he is also not mentioned in uh, the Bede's ecclesiastical history of English uh, people. Anglo-Saxon kingdoms and languages Heptarchy, four men, there are four men dialects that, uh, that is uh, four men dialects in the kingdoms of the, in the islands of England. In terms of language that evolved during that time, there were four main dialects. Uh, the first one is Northumbria, second one is Mercian, uh, and third one is Kentish, and fourth one is West Saxon. And 
the first one Nartampriya is the first to produce oral literature and it is the point to be noted that the literature during that time mostly uh, mostly literature during that time was an oral form about small portion of literature that is exist that exists uh, in written forms like the Bede's Ecclesiastical History, Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, most of the literature of that time uh, is, uh, is, is a kind of oral literature. Now, West Saxon. West Saxon uh, get more supremacy than the other because of the political supremacy of the Wessex and also this was because of the language that King Alfred uh, the great use King Alfred. Uh, uh, most of the King Alf, most of the text that is that is preserved uh, uh, is in that West Saxon, Saxon language. That is the language of King Alfred the Great. Now it is the time to uh, to 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 look into the very famous literary figures of the old English literature. That is the uh, King Alfred the Great. King Alfred the Great. Um, King Alfred the Great being the king of Wessex from 1879 to 1899 and in fact success successfully could unite the rest of the kingdom and rest of the provinces under his supremacy. He was primarily important, he was very important in political history of England because he had led the British army against the Viking invasion. He was primarily the king of Wessex, but he styles himself as the kingdom, uh, as the as the uh, king of all the kingdom. Now, Vikings were a group of very ruthless and uh, violent, uh, ruthless and very violent invaders. Ruthless and very violent invaders during that time. They were usually associated with war, with conquest, and with uh, and their violence was quite notorious during their times. Viking continuously invaded Britons. We find that during Anglo-Saxon period itself, the Vikings invaded twice, one in 1787, the first, and the second one in 1866. In 1866, Viking army uh, they had descended in this uh, area of East Anglia and also advanced to Wessex, but King Alfred the Great had successfully driven out all the Viking from that uh, from that area because he could unite all the kingdom against the attack of the viking though king king alfred was primarily the king of wessex he was actually the king of wessex he styles himself as the king of anglo saxons because there is no other figure that we see in the, in the old english period that was capable of uniting all the kingdoms together he not only unite the kingdom but uh, he also had given a new code of conduct for them to abide with and he is also the one who encourage education art and literature etc during the english period so that's how uh, Anglo-Saxon periods uh, came into being and, uh, <coughs> and, and ends in 1066 and the another period in history of English literature started that is Anglo-Norman period. If you have any question, queries, write in the comment section. We will, we will look into your uh, queries and, uh, and, find, and start your um, and, and will uh, answer your, your questions, your queries. We will, uh, students, we will begin our new lecture uh, from the Anglo-Norman, uh, from the Anglo-Norman uh, conquest, Anglo-Norman period that is started from 1066. The last point uh, to be noted is sorry for uh, this uh, con inconvenience that uh, Dan law. There are other uh, kinds of development that happened politically in 1876. In 1876, we find that Britain falls into the hands of Danes for a various brief period of times. Brit uh, Britain uh, falls into the hand of Danes uh, for a very brief period of times. Danes were the group of tribes that attack England primarily from Denmark and Norway. There are many invasions from 1003 till 1013. During that time, the Danes end up occupying most of the lands of the Britain, most of Mercia, East Anglia, Northumbria, all uh, had fallen into the hands of the Danes. Dane laws 
Dan's Dan laws were emerged and the area that were occupied by the Dan's Dan law basically emerged from uh, emerge uh, that uh, in the area that that is occupied by the uh, that is conquered by the Dan's Dan's were a group of people from Denmark and uh, Norway after the king alfred we do not find any kind of single person who was capable of uniting all the anglo saxon together together uh, though the Eng the danes were successful successfully established a code of conduct in almost half of uh, the in almost half of the britons uh, in almost half of the britons but they uh, but they, uh, they are not the worthy successors and the dan law dan's law ends by 1000 66 that is the end of anglo-saxon period and also the end of viking age and norman conquest started in 1066 thank you for watching